man, you know what time it is. It is the number one show here in the sim world. I am Rick Blaze, and this is Blazing Takes. And, of course, you know I'm joined by my good guy, my day ones. Siege, how are we doing, good brother? Oh, we're doing beautifully. We're here. It's hump day. First day in November, new month. And uh, it's time to like, let's get started on something exciting. We've, we've been cooking up for the people here, Rick. Time today yeah, to let's... officially start our team previews. Yep. And yeah, we're going to get right into it, Siege. Uh, we, we're doing these breakdowns uh, of the rosters of these teams in different regions. And what are we starting off first at, Siege? So we're, we're going we're gonna to make our way around the world. We're going to hit the intercontinental region first. And mm. the first team we're going to talk about today is Sim World South America. Mm. Let's talk about just some, some basic overview for Sim World South America. They didn't have a whole lot of success last year, but they did have Patricio Ramirez to lean on. Uh, he is gone now. They yep. are without him. So the big question is, wh what, where do they go? Where do they go from here? What do they do? Um, head coach Mateo Fernandez does have a lot, a lot to figure out with this team. They are returning Adelson Sampaio who is their second leading scorer and kind of the yep. you know leader of that team from a point guard standpoint. Patricio Ramirez was obviously the leader just from a most talented, most effective. But they did get Sampaio back, and he's a great player. Um, they added a couple of guys this year to look out for in my books, the second which of being Eric Banks um, from Napa, California. So we've got a stateside guy coming down there. 6'7". Um, he can shoot the ball, kind of a stretch guy. Um, him and they also added Tyler Montalvan, who is more of a, a big man defender. He's not got quite the offensive firepower that Patricio had, but he should be able to lock down the paint for them defensively. Um, but the, the big thing here, Rick, for me is it's hard to kind of say what they are going to do with their play style. Um, we, we really don't know. Without Patricio, that was kind of that was their play style last year was give the ball to him. Um, so we're, we're just gonna have to see. I'm expecting we're gonna see a lot of running through Sampaio this year. Yeah, yeah. Um, they're an interesting team. I'll say this uh, on paper, they're probably not as as well. I, I, it's not what we're gonna say. They're probably not as sorry as people might think they are. Uh, on paper, they actually pretty decent. I like Sampaio. I was really good, but they have really good size as a team. Yeah. Uh, and also they have really good shooters as a team. So I can see this being a team that's going to uh, stretch you out defensively and try to open, open, keep the floor spacing. Uh, I think a lot of space and pace for this team. Uh, and that'll help them get their shooters off uh, because they, and now they do, they are sus, sus, uh, I can't talk. They are suspect in the interior defense. They don't really have any interior defensive guys. They got a few athletes on the team, but shooting wise, the team is where they're going to try to win. So they're going to try to. I would believe they're going to try to spread you out. They're going to try to open the open the floor up, and then they're going to try to let Sampaio do, and they also let the shooters do their thing. Guys like Eric Banks, uh, that that can shoot the ball. Guys like uh, Alejandre, uh, they're going to let these guys go off, and they're going to be probably a make. They're going to be one of those teams when their threes are falling. They're going to be in the game and have a chance to win. When their threes are not falling, they're going to get blown out because they can't really stop anyone from on the inside. I mean, realistically, a, a team that lives and dies by the three is a dangerous team to play because, you know, however you may think that their roster looks, a lot of guys in this league are going to be able to hit their shots um, one day or another. Um, I do agree the, that interior defense, uh, Tyler Montalvan is going to have to really, really be something this year because other than him, they don't have a lot of lockdown down there. But that might not be something they're focused on. It, it might be a run and shoot threes kind of team, like you're saying. Um, yeah. Which which could be an issue, especially when you look at you know them playing within the international intercontinental region. Um, I mean, there there are some other teams that shoot the three decently. Uh, intercontinental region, but if if they can execute that well, um, they're going to be a nightmare matchup for a lot of these teams who do have some clunkier teams um, in the region who maybe can't run right. up and down the court quite as well, but also right. can't compete with the length at the wing positions that I think uh, South America is going to be able to put out there. Right. They they should be uh, – South America should be the international version of the Yacht Club. Okay. 
I kind of that's like nothing, that. That's nothing new to me. Yeah. All right. All right. So, so then let's move on. We got we got our, our looks in for South America. Our next team, and I, I know you're going to be excited about this one as I am too. You know it. Let's talk about Sim World Oceania. Oh, yeah. We already know the key players that we're going to be watching for are Damian Luffy and newly added Jarrell Bochamp. Now, Bochamp was kind of – let's be real, Rick. Those were both some surprise additions. Um, both coming Very. over from stateside. Weren't really sure Oceania was going to be able to bring in guys like that. Um, it, it wasn't looking so good. They did bring him back Olsen Myers, but shortly after bringing him – in and he's got some sim world prep experience so that's good he knows the league um but they lost cole webb who was their guy last year the only real competitive part of the team they brought back some other guys who should take some jumps in joe king jr um they Uh brought back latrell mitchell jackson whitlock yovani yovani conwell um so they got some guys back but those additions of jarell bochamp and damian luffy are nothing to kind of laugh at those are big so. time additions. Both have Ugh. the potential to be superstars. I mean, let's be real. Um, so I think this is a scary team, not just in the region, but yes, in all of SimWorld yes. prep. They're scary. Yes. This is not a team you're going to want to sleep on at any point in time. These guys are going to be fun to watch, and they're going to beat the brakes off some teams in the state side that thought they were too legit to quit. These guys from Oceania is going to beat the brakes off you. They are a matchup nightmare because Bochamp can really get any shot he want against any guard at any point in time. And my man Luffy can uh, he can first of all he's six six one seventy, which means he can he can play anywhere between the two, the three, or the four. So he's going to be a matchup problem out of of this world. If I'm the coach for 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 Oceania, I'm using Luffy like Luffy like they use a. Uh, really good wide receivers in the NFL. I might line you up wide. I might put you in the slot. I'm looking for whatever advantage I got against the player that's trying to hold you, and I'm going to make them pay. That's what Luffy is. He is the X factor on any team, but especially on this team when he gets the ultra green light, it's, it's going to be, I think Coach Drake alluded to it earlier uh, this morning, it's going to be like when um, when uh, the Denver Nuggets had Carmelo Anthony and Allen Iverson on the same team. Like, pick your poison. Like, on any given night, those guys, any one of them can drop 30 on you, and on some nights, both of them will drop 30 on your head. This Oceania team, now, they're not a perfect team. They don't have a lot of shooting. And and, and Luffy and the rest of his team, they're not really interested in defense. So they go, so they are going to let you score. You will have the opportunity to score, but you're going to have to outscore them because those two, Bochamp and Luffy, can get it done. Don't forget Coach Joe King Jr. And a few other guys can chip in, can pitch in on the party. But they're going to be a very, very, very fun team to watch. And they're going to be a very, very tough out. And don't be surprised. I'm telling you now, some of these guys, state, some of these teams stateside who are looking pretty at the top of their divisions, don't be surprised if one of their L's is coming from Oceana. Yeah, absolutely. Like you said, you know, not a lot of shooters. The only other weakness you can really see when, when looking at this rounded out roster um, there's not a whole lot of size. It's going to be a lot of small ball from this team. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I would expect to see Luffy probably playing at the four um, the majority of the time. They've got two six nine guys, and that's as big as they get. Um, and that's Jackson yeah. Whitlock and Musa Mashad. Um, both have experience already in similar prep, but that that's my one concern for this Oceania team. Yes, they're going to be able to score. they got two guys who can go get it on any given night. Um, but when they play a team – you know, let's say the likes of someone in their region of Simro Europe, who's got the seven foot two Ivanov Andre. Um, I'm not sure that they have an answer for that, but like you said, they might not play a whole lot of defense. They might let you score and just you know get into a shootout with you. And uh, they Correct. probably feel are feeling pretty confident they're going to be able to beat most teams in a shootout. And it's going to be a shootout. And what I like, then they do have one secret secret weapon that I want to I want to mention. Jason Whitlock, the guy you mentioned, the six nine guy. Yeah, he's going to be there big. But Jason Whitlock's specialty is actually shooting the basketball. Yep. So even when you talk about going against a seven footer from Europe, he has the ability to pull the big fellow away from the basket. Or if the big fellow decides he wants to stay in the paint, the big fellow can get lit up for a couple of points because Jason Whitlock can shoot that rock from the perimeter. So. They have a very interesting team, a very whimsical team, is what I would say. 
Uh, <laughs> but it's, yes. <laughs> and if coached correctly, you got throw some. They can throw some funky lineups out there, and they should keep teams off balance. They should every game should look different when you play against Oceana because they have that type of lineup to just kind of muck, muck it up every single game. They should be a hard team to get a read on. Um, I like them a lot. I, I like them a lot uh, in their conference. I think they're going to really – they might not surprise everybody now because I'm saying it, but they're going to beat the brakes off a lot of people. Yeah, and I mean, I, it's like you said, because Jackson Wicklock's got that ability, I think they're a team we might even see play a little bit of five-out kind of ball, and that's a really scary thing when you have those two guys in Luffy and uh, Bo yeah. you know that can take anyone one-on-one and yeah. really win one-on-one matchups. So, uh, yeah, and can, you, can you imagine – and can you imagine the pick and roll with Whitlock and 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 Luffy or Whitlock and Bochamp? Like, if you switch on the pick, you got you got a mismatch out of hell because Whitlock, I'm not Whitlock, Bochamp and and Luffy is gonna mix that player up and take him to the basket. Or let's say you stay home, or you don't go, or you, let's say you double the uh, coming out the pick. Now you got Whitlock open for the jumper. Like, they got some matchup problems that can really possess a lot of problems for folks who ain't got problem solvers. Period. Yeah, and to, if you don't play smart defensively, Oceana's going to eat your lunch. And they got that, it, like you said, it's a very almost whimsical roster. They got very interesting. A lot of guys who aren't necessarily fitting the mold you would expect them to. But if Coach Olson Myers, which we know he's an experienced coach, if he's got a lot to work with, but he's also got a lot to figure out on what's the way to maximize all of these players um, and what's the way to maximize Lovey and Bochamp. And, but if he can figure that out, I'm expecting Oceania to be one of the most dangerous teams, like we said. Uh, agree. Correct. If Ocean Myers don't become Oscar Meyer, then we can get some wins and have a good season from Oceana. Couldn't agree more. If o- if Ocean Myers is Oscar Meyer, though, then we in trouble. They in trouble. <laughs> well, no Oscar Meyer this season. That's, uh, hey, those are our, that's two our team previews for the day. Uh, go down there. Let us know what you think. Did you learn something? Hopefully you did. Um, I would bookmark this. Save it for your matchup whenever you got to play them this year. That's for sure. And we'll come revisit this thing later, see what we, what we went right, what we went wrong. If anything has changed or if anybody has come up uh, that we did mention that they really showing up. So that's it, man. Those are the two. Stay tuned tomorrow. We're bringing you two more. We're going to keep this thing going until we get all of our teams done. So stay locked in and keep it locked. That's it. Next week, I'm sorry, tomorrow, two more teams. Till tomorrow. Peace.